Okay, so just how good or how bad is the cheapest USB microphone on Amazon right now? Well, this is the Yusheng USB microphone. It's going for $16.99 right now on Amazon. And by the way, I'm pairing that with the cheapest 4K webcam at the moment that has some quality to it, in my opinion, which is the Mikose USB 4K webcam that's going for about $85 on Amazon. So the two of these things combined are just $102. So I'm gonna put the microphone through its paces, see what we can do in terms of changing the distance of the microphone, spinning it around, looking at the different features, unbox it, so stick around for that, and let's go. All right, so the Yusheng microphone, you know, I saw some great reviews on Amazon for it. You know, for $16.99, I was intrigued because I'm always on the lookout for the lowest price, best gear that you can find to do quality webcasts or quality work from home remote meetings. And the Yusheng doesn't really disappoint. So let me go ahead and unbox it and kind of walk through what's in the box. So you're gonna see that the Yusheng, it comes with a nice owner's manual and the owner's manual will give you some of the specs. You can see it's a cardioid pickup pattern. It's got pretty normal specs in terms of audio frequency range and pickup. And you know, it comes with a base. It's actually pretty tiny. The base is maybe two and a half inches tall in terms of how far it sits off your desk, which isn't ideal in terms of, you know, where you want to be with proximity from your mouth to the microphone, unless your desk sits up really high relative to your head. So that means that you're probably gonna want something like a boom arm. And the only real, you know, downside to this microphone, I would say, is that there's no native support for a boom arm directly. But when you unscrew the base, it looks like it has an M8 by 1.25 threaded base. So you can order a thread adapter, which I've got actually coming my way today. Hopefully it arrives in time before I actually finish the video and uh, produce it. But that way you can actually put it onto quarter 20 and then you can mount it to pretty much any boom arm that supports quarter 20, which is what most boom arms have on them. It's not the standard microphone mount, but it is the standard webcam and, and lighting and kind of normal camera peripheral mount uh, thread that you will find for pretty much for everything. So let's uh, have a listen to the microphone then in terms of what it can do as I change its position relative to my mouth. So we'll go ahead and try you know, spinning the microphone around. So here I'm about 45 degrees off axis, which in my tests it sounded pretty close to what you're just listening to. When you go to 90 degrees off axis, then you can really hear the sound start to drop off because of its cardioid pattern. And if I go all the way to 180 degrees off axis, then you can hear what that sounds like. So let me go back into position here now and you'll be able to see and hear what the microphone sounds like as it gets closer and closer to being in the proper position. In terms of buttons and ports on the microphone, as again, you can see that this has a USB-C port, something again that you know the Razer Siren Mini has micro USB, the Blue Snowball has mini USB, so USB-C is very good to see on this microphone, and it has the three and a half mil monitoring jack for headphones, which I've tested out. Um, the gain knob actually not only controls the headphone monitoring volume, but it also controls the gain. The volume itself is the volume of the microphone. So it kind of does both, splits both duties. Some microphones, it's only controlling the monitoring level for the headphones. There is also a button here that does three things. So in blue, it's in the normal on mode. If I press it one time, it will be in mute. Press it again, it's off mute. And then if I try to press it for three seconds until it goes green, now it's in kind of a noise cancellation mode. So if you've got like a fan or an air conditioner or something else nearby, it's going to actually compress the noise or remove the noise from that. Um, I always think it sounds a little bit muffled, a little bit kind of um, on offish. Uh, if you know what I mean when I do that with the noise cancellation. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. Okay, so now it's turned off and it's back to blue. So you can hear what it sounds like. Now let's go ahead and try um, in terms of what it sounds like from a keyboard rejection perspective. So my keyboard right now is probably 18 inches away. I'm going to go ahead and do some typing as if I'm on my keyboard. Just to see what that's going to sound like later because I haven't actually listened to this with the keyboard to see if there's any major keyboard noises coming through. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, try different distances for the microphone. So right now I'm probably about two feet away from my mouth. 
Now this is about three feet away from my mouth, just so you can hear what it sounds like again if it's on your desk and quite a bit away from you. I'll go back to two feet-ish, and then I'll go ahead and put it back where it was, or it was somewhere around, say, eight to 12 inches away from me. So you can probably hear, you know, as I get closer to it, the microphone sounds better and better and better. But, you know, the danger is obviously plosive. So let's listen to plosive rejection to see what that sounds like if I try to throw a bunch of peas or teas at it. So Peter picked a peck of pickled peppers. Sorry if that uh, blew out your eardrums, but I uh, just wanted to see what the plosive sounded like on the microphone. Um, but, you know, my tests, they were pretty pronounced, so you don't, you don't really want to speak directly into the microphone's capsule and kind of eat the microphone like, like some microphones. And if you do, you're going to want to make sure you have tools like OBS and you've got um, compression, limiters, those types of things applied to it, at least to minimize uh, some of those uh, plosive or, you know, if you're yelling into the microphone so you can normalize those sounds out of it. Otherwise, everything that I've recorded so far in this video is on the default settings. Nothing's changed, no filters are applied in OBS, and you can hear exactly what it sounds like out of the box. So I gotta say for $16.99 and then for the $84.95 that the Makose camera goes for, um, for a 4K camera, it's a pretty amazing setup for about $102. If you're wondering why I uploaded this video at 1080p, it's because I'm running everything through NVIDIA Broadcast, which has done the background removal. This camera has such a wide angle uh, field of view, it's probably 90 plus degrees field of view, that I wasn't able to get my framing quite right where I wanted to. So that's why I'm filming this at 1080p, because it's running through NVIDIA Broadcast, so I can remove the background and make it this lovely bluish purplish colors kind of like Microsoft Teams. By the way, this setup would sound pretty amazing and look pretty amazing on Microsoft Teams as a hint for remote work if you're looking for a nice setup for that. Okay, so that was the cheapest USB microphone on Amazon, the Yusheng 1699 USB microphone with probably the cheapest best quality 4K webcam that you can get on Amazon right now, which is the Makose uh, 4K USB camera. So hopefully these tips help you in terms of finding your next budget or secondary setup. If you like the video, be sure to give me a like. Otherwise, subscribe to the video. Check out this video on all the 4K webcams, and we'll see you next time.